Let's discuss duty of disclosure, candor, and good faith when it comes to applying for a U.S. patent. This duty is based on a specific United States Patent and Trademark Office rule known as Rule 56, as well as various court decisions. Rule 56 requires that anyone involved in the process of filing and prosecuting a U.S. patent application disclose to the USPTO all non-cumulative information known to be material to the patentability of the claims in that application. According to the USPTO, those involved in the process include each inventor, each attorney or agent who prepares or prosecutes the application, and anyone who is involved in the management of preparation or prosecution of the application. So, whether you're involved at the engineering, product development, marketing, or legal level of the patent process, a duty of candor may apply to you. And therefore, you need to be aware and actively involved in helping to comply with this duty. Rule 56 dates back to the 1970s. In that pre-internet era, the USPTO relied heavily on the patent applicant to share background information on advancements within their respective field of technology. Times have changed, but unfortunately, Rule 56 has not kept up. Even though the US courts changed their standard for compliance with the duty of candor in 2012, the USPTO has yet to update Rule 56. So, in order to fulfill the duty of candor requirements, we still must gather all of the necessary information and documentation that could be related to the patent application, and then determine what non-cumulative material information needs to be sent to the USPTO. Importantly, complying with the duty does not mean that you need to do any kind of new or updated searches. We just need to know what you know about the patent application. As you're assembling your list of background information to include in your invention disclosure, here are some important things to remember about your duty of candor. The first is to explain how the invention got to the point of being the subject of a patent application. Similar to showing your work on a math problem to prove you didn't take any shortcuts, your disclosure should include all relevant information surrounding the invention. Explain how the invention got to the point of being the subject of a patent application. The way we gather information and find inspiration is always changing. Unlike the 1970s, you're rarely scanning your bookshelves for reference materials to assist in your work. Think about the digital version of what might have been on your bookshelves. Did you read a downloaded research paper for guidance? Were you reviewing your competitor's website to see how they're solving a particular problem? What did you find most relevant in understanding the background of your invention disclosure? It's also important to make sure that earlier company patents and products that represent prior generations of the technology and products in the invention disclosure are reviewed. Generally speaking, it's safer to err on the side of disclosing potentially relevant information behind your invention to allow others to make the call. Finally, it's important to remember that the duty of disclosure lasts throughout the examination of the patent application. Potentially relevant information, even if it's found after you've submitted the application, must be forwarded to the patent department or patent attorneys or agents in a timely manner. Following these steps will enhance the chances your application will be approved and will be considered a strong and enforceable patent right for the company. If you have any questions, always contact your internal patent or legal departments.